Welcome to my video program about anxiety. Now this video program, this is part one, and I'm helping people to understand and to release anxiety. My name's Lorna Jackson. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, a trainer and an author. And I'm just going to run through a little bit of information about myself. These are just some um, photos from over the years of my training um, sessions I've done with people using hypnosis. Now, I've been a practicing hypnotherapist for nearly 20 years now. Um, and my clients come to my clinic on the Gold Coast, Australia. I see clients in my clinic. And I also see clients interstate and international uh, clients. They're treated via online Zoom sessions, which work very well. I um, keep very busy seeing clients for issues such as stop smoking, weight loss, um, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, fears and phobias. But I am seeing a lot of people for anxiety. And that's what prompted me to put together this um, this program. So my clinical business consists of many referrals these days. I get referrals from lots of people. Um, and over the years, I've studied with countless well-known hypnotherapists, masters, spiritual mentors, and from therapists from all around the world. And I love personal growth and learning. And my main goal as a clinical hypnotherapist is to help to rewire mental patterns and belief systems with my clients. And this helps to transform their life in a positive way. And I also want to demystify the mystical around hypnotherapy and hypnosis so that people have all the tools within their own reach to make measurable changes in their lives. So this video program was designed to help people who want to understand and manage anxiety and to identify their triggers and to learn how to release them to learn how to relax the body and the mind because often people with anxiety just are unable to relax physical, the body physically, and also the mind is very busy. Um, in my clinic, I'm seeing more people suffering from anxiety than ever before. Anxiety disorder is one of the most common mental conditions in the world today. Um, anxiety is a general term for nervousness, fear, apprehension, and worry and impacts our daily lives. And it's becoming an epidemic and it ruins lives. So people suffering from anxiety exist rather than live. And many people today are just coping rather than living. So anxiety disorders affect approximately 14% of the Australian population. And unfortunately, the use of prescription medication to treat disorders of this nature are constantly increasing. Mild anxiety is vague and unsettling. However, severe anxiety can have very serious impacts on, on daily life. Often people feel a general state of anxiety before an exam, an interview for a job or a test, a recital, and these feelings are normal as this is the body's way of preparing us for, for peak performance. It, it would, in fact, be a little worrying if you are not a little bit nervous. However, anxiety is considered to be a real problem when it interferes with our ability to sleep or to function normally. So when anxiety goes on too long, problems can occur and people often use unhelpful ways to cope, such as emotional eating. And this can often lead to eating disorders, uh, depression and alcohol abuse. It is very important to address anxiety. As soon as you feel any symptoms coming on, either emotionally or physically. So many of us are drenched in stress and we don't even realise that there could be um, another way to live a life. So how much better it could be if we just learnt to relax a little. 
For the longest time, we believe that healing from stress and anxiety takes years and never-ending therapy sessions. But today we know that's not true. By using the psychosensory techniques in this program, you can learn to reprogram your subconscious mind and healing is very possible in a short time. So the physical symptoms of, of anxiety can be a shortness of breath. Often people feel dizziness or off balance. They experience heart palpitations. They may shake or tremble. They may get really hot, start sweating or feel nausea. Usually anxiety comes from outside forces, but we can make ourselves anxious with negative self-talk. And this is bad, a bad habit of telling ourselves the worst will happen, a doom and gloom view of our lives and the world. So some environmental causes for anxiety are the death of a loved one, trauma from abuse, bullying and victimization, a lot of stress in a relationship, in a marriage, friendship or a divorce, um, stress at work, school, excessive worrying about money, worrying about natural disasters or losing your job, stressing about performance, and the list can go on and on. However, a little bit of anxiety is normal and necessary for us to survive. Now, anxiety is man's inability to cope with stress. It is a learnt response that is becoming more and more into our lives. And this learnt response is causing people to live less and less in a truly human fashion. Anxiety causes marriages to, to disintegrate, panic attacks can happen, and a variety of psychosomatic illnesses. But how can we know when our anxiety is dangerously acute? After all, everyone has problems. Everyone has heard a screaming baby or being annoyed by a neighbor's dog or a loud car. So is that anxiety? You may have a tremor. Your heart might suddenly beat faster when confronted by what seems to be a crisis. Biologically, we would expect the body to have an inbuilt mechanism for handling anxiety, and it has. We have the natural means of managing anxiety but the problem is we've lost the knack of using it. So the increasing sophistication of life and with a preoccupation with its material aspects have led us to lose the art of coping with tension by using the body itself. Now, the medical profession hasn't been much help in this. It is much easier to prescribe tranquil tranquilizers and to show patients how to train themselves to be more relaxed. The medical profession has followed the lead of the materialistic attitude of the society in which we live and has concentrated its attention on bigger and more powerful tranquilizers. So anxiety causes bodily tension. The whole muscular system becomes alert, ready for action. Tension in the limbs is experienced, especially the chest and the shoulders. The increased tone in the muscles of respiration tends to make breathing difficult. And the person becomes conscious of their breathing and the increased tone of the muscles gives them a feeling of constriction in the chest. Tension in the muscles can cause pain, and if it is widespread, patients can suffer from generalised pain in the form of nervous rheumatism, which is often referred to as fibromyalgia today. So more often, tension is localised and commonly produced pain in the neck, the shoulders and the back. And some people think they're having a heart attack and they rush off to hospital. So what is happening is that more stimuli, more data and more problems are being fed into the mind than the anxious person's central nervous system can integrate. And what causes mental stress to one person does not necessarily cause stress to another. 
One man loses his business and is mentally undisturbed, but another suffers a small loss and is stricken with anxiety. So the basic cause of anxiety is the arrival at the brain of more nervous impulses that can be probably, pro probably processed out by the brain. So the sensory input arises from three main sources, from our external environment through sight and hearing, from our body through nerve endings in all the various structures and organs, and from our mind, and from conscious thoughts and the mental activity of our conscious mind. So when the sensory input reaches a certain level and is not completely integrated, an anxiety results. So life was very different for our ancestors in the more primitive days of being human. The external environment back then contributed a major share of the sensory input and our bodies learned to react to anxiety by altering our physiolo physiological systems to meet external danger. And this was by means of increased blood pressure, cardiac output, and the diversion of blood to the muscles. But the evolutionary development, with the evolutionary development, the major sensory input has changed to the conscious and unconscious activities of the mind. And with the result that the once useful physiological reaction to anxiety is now no longer an appropriate response. So in our present circumstances, it only adds to the sensory input and so increases our anxiety. And along with the physiological reaction of anxiety comes the worry of apprehension. Just as fear serves a useful purpose in warning us of external danger, apprehension warns us that all is not well within. And there's a feeling of fear but it is an objectless fear. And at the same time, as we experience this fear, we are aware that there is nothing that should make us afraid. So when we feel real fear, we can always attach our emotion to some outside object and say that we are afraid of this or that. But because of the objectless quality of anxiety, Apprehension is extremely disturbing. We simply do not know what we're afraid of and we feel that something is going to happen, but we don't know what. Something bad is about to befall us, but we cannot imagine what it might be. So exposure to long-term stresses can cause serious medical problems. The adrenal glands, which are located above the kidneys, and deal with hormones can become depleted, causing the body to become low in cortisol. And this can cause brain fog, low energy, emotional stress, depression, low blood pressure, body weakness, abdominal pain, even sweet cravings, lightheadedness, and other symptoms. So thanks for watching the first video in this program and I suggest that you click on the number two video now and I'll explain further for you.